Round 3. Fino here with a guide for the Gilfest exhibition quest where you fight Izo. He's the only enemy, but he's got a beefy 1.2 million health on his second bar. That and he has a reactive resistance buff, that changes depending on what you hit him with. The defense portion is instant and can change during your chain. It also has a retaliation effect. If your turn ends with him on buster resistance, he stuns one of your frontliners. If it's quick, he gets a 5 turn crit damage buff. If arts, he deletes your crit stars. Juggling Izo's resistance is the biggest part of this fight, and as you may have guessed, letting him accumulate that crit buff is a really bad idea. He'll start one-shotting your guys. In general, you need to play your hands so that you don't have the same kind of card back to back. Your specific strategy depends on whether you go with a crit or an NP-focused setup. Starting with that second option, you can safely end on Arts cards since you don't need stars in the first place. The drawback is that Izo will end on Arts resistance, making it harder to cash in. However, there's a certain type of servant that has a mismatched deck and NP. More specifically, I'm talking about single target casters with Buster Noble Phantasms. Because you build charge and arts cards while spending them on Buster cards, you have a nice flow of damage onto Izo. If you can arrange a friend to set one up, Xuanzang is quite good for this fight. One of her skills gives party wide debuff immunity, which means you can do an NP arts Buster combo for extra damage without getting punished. Ilya should work as well. As for Cersei, I don't have a whole lot of experience with her, so I can't say either way. Maybe one of the commenters will lend a hand with that. Now earlier I said you should be careful with quick enders, but there's a high risk, high reward strategy where you do just that. If you have passive star generation or a good quick attacker, you can burn Izo down relatively fast with BAQ combos. The catch is that the battle in general speeds up with Izo also hitting much harder as he builds his crit buff. If you're gonna go this route, I recommend running supports that can mitigate incoming damage while accelerating your main attacker. Merlin in particular saves you a lot of headaches in this fight. As an assassin, Izo's inherently less effective against the gamut of support casters, so if you're having trouble, that's a good place to start. I have a little more to say on this strat, but it's related to phase 2, so let's deal with that first. On break, Izo ups the pressure by getting a stacking damage buff against humanoid servants. However, his stacks go to zero every time he kills someone. This is a blanket damage buff because every usable servant has the humanoid trait. Well, except one. Summer BB. She might not have class advantage, but she does have strong crit synergy, passive star generation, a noble phantasm that reduces charge, and the ability to lock herself into a BAQ hand. With those crits, she can turbo out huge amounts of damage and take Izo to Pound Town. Now this approach still has to deal with large incoming damage. One way around this is to fill your backline with taunters. They take pressure off BB and also reset Izo's humanoid damage when they die. If your roster is jank as hell, you can attempt a support solo. I don't have much experience doing it with this fight, but Atlas Academy has a sample of runs that worked. I'll link that down below. Now I can't speak to the consistency of these runs without grailing to those levels, so buyer beware. I'll also note that Izo's regular kit includes an evade, so if runs end with a margin of one run, that can screw you good. Regardless, good luck with the DPS requirements. Izo's a bit of a bastard. That's all for now. Like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more, and come watch me on Twitch where I stream every weekend, Friday through Sunday, 3pm Pacific Time. See you there.